In this video, we're going to be going through this bookshelf and looking at some specific books. And the reason I'm making this video is because I just got this bookshelf and I put it together and most of these books were on the floor scattered around in this room. So I'm very, very happy that I have a bookshelf and my books are no longer on the floor. They were on the floor for months, at least six months, and enough was enough, right? So I bought a bookshelf, I sucked it up, I put it together, and I have some of my books here. Now, the books that I point out in this video, I will try to leave links in the description. And as for the bookshelf, um, I, I should be able to leave a link in the video so if you wanna check out the bookshelf, you can. It took me about an hour to put together, and yeah, it works, I'm so happy. All right, so let's just go down the line and talk about some of the books. So this one here, starting the first row, is Algebra by Hungerford. So this is a book that I initially used when I was an undergrad. I actually borrowed this book um, from one of my college professors and I did an independent study on Netherian rings and other topics in commutative algebra. And I felt that this was one of the best books for that. Now my professor, uh, didn't really uh, think Hungerford was a great book, but I was doing self-study with this book and I thought it was really good. I thought it had some really good stuff on modules and Netherian rings. So this is an abstract algebra book and it's advanced level and it's the one by Hungerford. Now don't confuse this with Hungerford's other book, okay? This is the graduate level one, which I think is better than his introductory book. I'll leave a link in the description in case you wanna check this one out. So good for people who already know abstract algebra and want to learn a little bit more. The biggest con is the price. It's not super inexpensive. Uh, this one here is one for beginners. This is Intermediate Algebra by Miller, O'Neill, and Hyde. This is actually the first book I used when I was in college. So when I started college, the first math class I took used this book here. This is a book for beginners who want to learn basic algebra. Um, great book for beginners if you want to get started with just basic, basic math, right? Um, I would come home every day, I would sit at my kitchen table, and I would just grind out problems every night, you know? It just, it's a grind, it's a grind. Um, this one here is one I've talked about before. This is a very inexpensive book, and is perfect for writing proofs. It's called Proofs by Jay Cummings. And you know what's really cool about this book is when I first uh, did the review on this book, Jay Cummings actually left a comment in my video. I was like, oh cool, Jay Cummings saw my video. How cool is that, right? So he's an amazing person, right? Anyone who can write a book like this is amazing. Uh, intelligent, super intense. It's a really big, thick book. It's way thicker than most of the other um, proof writing books out there, but it's not as expensive. So it's very affordable. It's a soft cover. It's a little bit wordy for my taste. I already know a lot of this stuff. So it's like, ah. Eh. But if you're just starting out, it might be exactly what you need. Uh, really, really good book. I prefer this one, which is more expensive and smaller, and some people don't like it as much, but I like it. It's An Introduction to Abstract Mathematics by Bond and Keen. Great book for learning to write proofs. Um, a, little, a lot more expensive than the Cummings book, probably. But I use this one to teach an independent study uh, many years ago with just a few students. So I think I had like five or six students and I taught them how to write proofs and we did like some introductory abstract algebra. And one of the students uh, said that he didn't really like the book so much, but um, I liked it. So I was like, oh, I disagree with you. <laughs> so great book for, for writing proofs. Another really good one on proof writing, I like this one even better, is How to Prove It by Velman. Um, this is one I've talked about multiple times, so I'll try to keep it short. Uh, this book, is perfect. The size is perfect. You can lay in bed and you can read it. This is this is an awesome book. If you're thinking about getting uh, a proof writing book, I would say get this one. Initially, I did not want to buy this book, but people were um, you know, leaving comments about how great it was. And I'm like, oh, I feel pressured. So I bought it. It's worth it. I recommend it. So another book for proof writing. There's some more here on proof writing, so we'll skip that row. Uh, this one I was reading last night. This is Johnny Fruin's Mathematical Statistics with Applications. This book has answers to the odd numbered problems. It's been in print for a while. I think it was initially published in the 60s. And it's just an awesome book on mathematical statistics. And it's a textbook, right? It's just a solid textbook. Very happy with this book. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep reading it more today. I'm probably gonna read a little bit more and just do like maybe do like 20 problems from the book later on today. I try to do math every single day. It's like it's like it's like training your mind, you know, do, do some 
mental activity and, and physical, you know, mental and physical every day. You, know, you train your mind, train your body. Um, and I think math is a good way to do that. I know a lot of you who watch these videos aren't even in school. There's a lot of people here who are older, 50s, 60s, 70s. So if you are, uh, just know that, you know, you're not alone. It's good to do math every day. Uh, do math, and that's how you get better. This is one that is really popular. Um, one of my subscribers here uh, was talking about it. Elementary Differential Equations. This is the one by Boyce and DePrima. This is a classic old school book on differential equations. It's got a lot of content. Um, it's got answers to half the problems. So great book for DE. I definitely recommend it. This one is a good one for calculus that I haven't talked about in a while. I usually talk about the Stewart book and the Larson book. It's kind of heavy. This is Thomas Calculus. This is a book which was written, initially written by a man named George B. Thomas. And he passed away. That's the 13th edition. So the book has gone through so many editions. It's such a good book that they just kept redoing it. And they have like new people now who come in and they change the book. So the older versions of Thomas Calculus are very different from the newer versions. Like a lot of the older versions have uh, more answers and they have different content. The newer version is supposed to be improved. And I guess it is. I guess it is improved. I mean, I, 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 they're different. I'm not going to say that the newer version is worse. And I'm not going to say it's better. There's just been changes for the good and for the bad. No book is perfect. Um, I have both the new version and I have like two or three different versions of the old Thomas Calculus. Very, very good book. I think... I think there's people, in, I think it's used a lot in India, perhaps. I think in India, I'm not sure, but if you're from India, maybe you can tell me. Um, this is actually used in a lot of schools. I've never actually used this to teach calculus. Uh, I've only taught calculus out of the Larson book. And I took calculus using the Stewart book. So this is a book that I discovered through YouTube, right? My subscribers here were like, oh, get the Thomas Calculus. Get Thomas Calculus. So I bought it and yeah, just super, super happy with it. Great book, great explanations. Uh, here's the Larson book. Let's skip that for now. Let's talk about this one here for briefly. Calculus by Tom Apostle. There's two volumes. This is volume one. A little bit pricey, but it's a classic book. Uh, Tom Apostle was a great teacher and a great mathematician. Legendary book. Legendary book on calculus. Uh, old school 60s book on calculus. This one here is really good for beginners who want to learn analysis. This is probably the best book for beginners. I, I don't want to say it's the best, but I do like this book quite a bit. It starts with the piano axioms, so it's very, very basic. Um, it's just clean. It's got really good explanations. It doesn't have answers to all of the problems, but for the answers it does have, I, I feel like it does a really good job, right? It does a really good job with those. And it's got you know good, good explanations and good solutions for the answers it does have. So it might be just what you need if you're trying to learn um, basic analysis. Okay, so this is one that might be just what you need. And let's see, let's go to the third row. Um, this one here is interesting. This is one that was recommended uh, by uh, one of my subscribers who used to be really active, but I haven't seen him in a while. His name is Gordon. And this is an old school book. I think he used this when he was in college because uh, he's older. This is Linear Algebra by Hoffman and Kunz. This is like the old school proof-based linear algebra book. A more modern version of this book, or I guess the modern equivalent, would be Friedberg's book. A very nice book if you can get your hands on a copy. It's, it's, it's totally worth it, um, I think, to get. And let's go to the bottom row here. Ah, this is a classic. This is a classic. This is Calculus by Michael Spivak. So I'm sure you all know this book. This is probably the most revered, I hope I said that right, calculus book in the entire world. Um, this is like for honors calc students. I used to know this guy on the internet. He was one of my internet friends. And we used to hang out in this math chat room. And he's still there, actually. And he said he took a class where he used this book uh, at the University of Waterloo in Canada. Yeah, so they actually used this book in Waterloo, University of Waterloo in Canada, um, to teach calculus, right? To, to take calculus. So that's that's pretty awesome, right? I mean, that's that's awesome. I bought this book after I took Calc 3. And honestly, um, I had a hard time with it because I didn't know how to write proofs. So you can still do a lot of the computational stuff. You're just going to have a hard time understanding some of the proofs if you don't know any logic or if you don't know any proof. That's why it's so important to get a proof writing book uh, like the one I recommended by Velman. It really is going to help you know take your math to the next level. But still, a great book to have. I bought my edition new. So I bought my copy 
uh, brand new. And I'll go to the bottom row now and uh, pick up a book uh, down here. So let me just see what we got down here. Um, how about the, the bottom row? Well, here's, here's one that's pretty good. Another classic mathematical analysis by Tom Apostle. This is uh, Apostle's analysis book. Also very excellent, very, very rigorous, very hardcore, not for the faint of heart, right? So this is a book that um, takes takes a lot of effort to to read and work through, but it's worth it. I definitely recommend it. So I didn't go through the whole bookshelf, uh, but I just wanted to go through some, just pick a few from each row. So there you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh no, unlucky 13, 13 books. I'm not that superstitious, but maybe I am. Okay, so one more book. This is one that my good friend, uh, I don't know where he is today, but I had a, a good friend I used to work with, really great guy. This was his favorite algebra book. He's like, oh, you got to get the Pinter book. He had an accent. And uh, I, I did not know about this book until he told me. So he was the one who turned me on to this book. This is a wonderful book. Many people here on the channel have recommended it. This is a beginner book for people who want to learn abstract algebra. It's called A Book of Abstract Algebra by Charles C. Pinter. Notice my copy says examination copy not for sale. It's kind of cool, right? I guess this was like for instructors or something, but fantastic book. Anyways, just wanted to show off my new bookshelf, <laughs> just talk about some books, uh, give you some ideas. So I just picked some that I'm fairly familiar with, very familiar with these. Uh, and some of the other ones on the bottom row, they're not even math books. They're just other books I have. But yeah, anyways, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you get some ideas from math books on specific topics. Um, yeah, I hope it's been helpful. Oh, if you are interested in learning math, consider hitting subscribe. I have tons of videos here on the channel. I have courses that I sell on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on Udemy. So they're on the Udemy platform. So it's like safe and stuff. You know, you're not going to get a virus. Um, you know, Udemy is a legit website. But if you buy them, please click the links on my website uh, or use the links in the description of any of my YouTube videos. Also, I have an Instagram, The Real Math Sorcerer. I should post some stuff on there today. I probably will. It's fun. I like Instagram because I can put music. It's easy. It's just fun. Um, yeah, it's a really fun platform. So yeah, until next time, hopefully this has been helpful. And I will leave links in the description to all of these books. And the bookshelf, I'm going to try something new. There's a way I can leave like a link to the bookshelf in the video. I'm going to try that. But yeah, I hope it's been helpful. Get out there. Remember, do math every day. Try to do at least one problem. Train your mind. Good luck.